everyone. I'm Contessa Brewer. Thank you for joining us. Fireworks from the start at the first GOP debate of the election season. And no surprise here, billionaire businessman Donald Trump was at the center of all of it. He and nine other Republican candidates took to the stage at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland. And these candidates are really looking for a breakout moment, something that differentiates them from the crowd, something that brings them closer to winning the party's nomination. And there were quite a few breakout moments. Here to talk about all of them are CBS News congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes and political news and opinion writer at the Weekly Standard, Mike Warren. Also, Major Garrett is outside the Quicken Loans Arena. Major, I want to begin with you. What a rowdy crowd. I don't know that I've ever heard that kind of vocal crowd for a political debate. Well, certainly the crowd played a role in tonight's debate. And I would really try to break the debate down in three ways. You have the trunk. Trump-centric part of the debate. Then you have the sort of appeals by people not named Donald Trump to the key constituencies in the early primary and caucus states. What I mean by that is Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. And then you had the sort of moments where people tried to break out on issues that they want to own themselves. In that last category, I would put Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, who was very aggressive on entitlement reform. It's not a sexy issue, but it's one a lot of conservative Republicans like to hear specifics about. That was an effort by Chris Christie to say, I have something different, something specific, something that is forward looking. On the Trump centric part of the debate, it started right off the bat. Would you run a third party campaign, Donald Trump, if you didn't win the Republican nomination? He would not commit to that. And that created some early fireworks and some rumbling in the crowd, like, what kind of a Republican are you? And then you had appeals from Mike Huckabee and from Marco Rubio and from Scott Walker to baseline constituencies on pro-life, pro-gun, social conservative issues in Iowa, South Carolina especially, and also in New Hampshire. So I would say the debate had many things for many different audiences, but clearly at the beginning and certainly at a couple times in the middle, Trump dominated. But I would also say from my perspective, Trump did not wear well in this debate. As things got more specific and he was asked to deal with things about his own companies filing for bankruptcy, I think Donald Trump's performance faded as the debate went on. So when we're looking at the most recent CBS News poll, we had Donald Trump in the lead with 24 percent going into this debate, followed by Jeb Bush at 13 percent. And then bringing up the tail, you would have John Kasich on that stage. Uh, Major, do you think that anybody switches in, in terms of position in the poll numbers because of their answers in this debate? Not immediately. What I've learned watching presidential politics is debate performances create an audience for you, but if you don't have the organization on the ground, if you don't have the means by which to translate that in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada, which are the four most important early games. Remember, we don't have a national primary. What these candidates have to, and their teams have to do is translate the moments they had tonight into support and grassroots efforts on the ground in the four states that I just mentioned. Yeah. And I would say, generally speaking, Jeb Bush did well in sort of solidifying after a kind of rough, rough week for him. He did well. I don't think Jeb Bush broke out at all, but he certainly gave nothing for his supporters to be discouraged about. But I would say Scott Walker, Mike Huckabee, even Rand Paul, who said, I'm a different kind of Republican throughout the debate and tried to demonstrate it in different ways, gave his supporters plenty of things to work with. So the hard work now is you've gone through the debate what do you do with that on the ground with your supporters and the people you've begun to attract to your cause?